Hello students, today we will discuss about the supports of urinary bladder. Now when you will have the supports of urinary bladder, you should always keep this thing in mind that there has to be the two sets of the supports. Now these two sets are known as the primary support or you can say the true support and the false supports of your urinary bladder. Now what do you mean by the true supports? The true supports are also known as the true ligaments and these ligaments are nothing but they are the condensation of the surrounding fascia which is present in the pelvis. While the false supports or the false ligaments are very delicate folds of the peritoneum which surrounds your urinary bladder. So let's first discuss about the true supports or the true ligaments of urinary bladder. These true ligaments as I already told you that they are the condensation of the pelvic fascia. They present around the neck of the urinary bladder and the base of urinary bladder. Now what are the name of these fascia? So first is you have the lateral puboprostatic ligament. That means it is a connection anteriorly because you have the pubic bone anteriorly and this is your two sets of the ligament. One is lateral and another is medial puboprostatic ligament. Then you will have the median umbilical ligament, lateral true ligament and posterior ligament of urinary bladder. But whenever you are writing the supports of urinary bladder, you have to understand that in females you do not have the prostate. So these first and second ligaments are not for the females. In females, rather than having the prostate, you are having the connection between the bladder directly with the pubic bone and that is known as pubovesical ligament. Clear? So whenever you are writing the supports, there are puboprostatic ligaments and pubovesical ligaments. Pubovesical is for the female, puboprostatic for the male and remaining three ligaments are common in both median umbilical ligament, lateral true ligament and posterior ligament of urinary bladder. Now when we will talk about the false ligament, the false ligament is nothing but these are the folds of the peritoneum which are median, medial, lateral false and posterior false ligaments. So let us discuss these ligaments one by one. First is the puboprostatic ligaments in case of the male. So whenever we are having the word puboprostatic, it itself suggesting that it is a connection between the pubic bone and the prostate and you know that prostate is present around the neck of urinary bladder and that is the most fixed part of the bladder in case of the males. So when you are talking about the fixation of the prostate, you are actually supporting the urinary bladder from its lower side near the neck. Now this lateral puboprostatic ligament extends from the anterior end of the tendinous arch of the pelvic fascia to the upper part of prostatic sheath. But when you will have the medial prostatic ligament, it extends from the back of your pubic bone near the pubic symphysis to the prostatic sheath. Now see, there is a only one difference between these two terms. What is the one difference? That if you have the puboprostatic ligament, the proximal attachment, that means the attachment on the uh, this prostate is common. They both ligaments are connected to the prostatic fascia. But their anterior attachment on the pubic part or inner side of the pelvis is different. When you are having this ligament, it is directly having connection here on the pubic bone. But there is a one more ligament which is not connect directly on the bone, but it is having a connection on this tendinous arch of inner side of pubis. Clear? So this much of a small difference is making these two ligaments. What is that? Lateral puboprostatic and medial puboprostatic. If you will see here, what you are able to see that they both are attached to the prostatic, uh, the fascia around the prostate. But when you will have their attachment on the bone, this medial ligament is attached on the pubic bone 
while this lateral ligament attaches on the tendinous arch of the pelvic fascia just inside the pubic bone. Now here in these two diagram you can see the placement of the puboprostatic ligament. Now here you can see that this loop is around the, this prostate which is more clearly visible in this. So here you can see the loop, it, this loop is going like this, it is enclosing the prostate and it is coming like this. And these two ends are directly attached on this bone and that is why it is known as medial puboprostatic ligament. But if it has to be the lateral puboprostatic, then this loop will start from here, then it enclose the prostate and it will go to the another side where you have this tendinous arch, clear? So this is the only difference between the lateral and medial puboprostatic ligament. But the only thing which you have to understand that they are making a loop around the prostate and the medial puboprostatic ligament attached on the bone while lateral attached on the tendinous arch. Now in case of the female, as I already told you that when you will have the differentiation in both male and female, you do not have the prostate in this neck region of the bladder. So what will happen that this fascia is directly enclosing this lower part of the urinary bladder or the neck and this is now known as pubovesical ligament. Here you are having the word puboprostatic ligament. Now what is median umbilical ligament? Now median umbilical ligament is nothing but it is a embryological in origin and it develops from the remnant of fetal allantois in form of the urecus. So this is the question of your exam, what is median umbilical ligament? So when you will see the apex of urinary bladder, in this image you can see that this is the apex of urinary bladder and from this apex there is a connection and this connection is going to up to this umbilical area and this connection is known as urecus and this urecus develops from the obliterated fetal allantois, clear? And this is known as median umbilical ligament which is a thick cord like a structure. Then you will have posterior ligament of urinary bladder. The posterior ligament of urinary bladder is most important to understand and it is having a question in exam. What is the question? So the uh, first we will talk about the question. The question is that if you will talk about the venous drainage of prostate as well as the urinary bladder, where it is? So the veins from the bladder and prostate will go in the posterior direction through this posterior ligament of the bladder and it arises from the plexus around the bladder which is known as vesical plexus. So this is the question of your exam that for the venous drainage of urinary bladder and prostate, what is the direction? So in this image you can see that the veins are going on the posterior side and they will enter into this internal iliac vein and from the internal iliac vein the blood will enter into the common iliac to the inferior vena cava, clear? So the direction of venous drainage of urinary bladder is in posterior side and when the veins are going posteriorly they are present in this ligament which is known as posterior ligament of urinary bladder. So this is the question about this ligament. So it is directed upward and backward, it extends from the side of the base of bladder to the wall and <coughs> these ligaments consist of veins which arises from the plexus around the urinary bladder. Now in this image, if you will see where you will find the veins. Now here you can see that these are the veins and these veins are present in this fold and this is become thickened and that is going to form the posterior ligament of urinary bladder. Though, so you are not only having the vein in this but you are also having the artery. Now here you can see that this is your uh, superior vesical artery and this superior vesical artery will also approach the urinary bladder and in the same fold you are having the vein. So this is your posterior ligament of urinary bladder which contains artery as well as your vein. Now what is about the 
uh, false ligament. So one is the median umbilical fold. Now my dear students, there are two terms, one is ligament, another is the fold. If you are talking about the urecus, then it is a ligament. But if you are talking about the peritoneum which is covering the urecus, then it is known as the false support or the median umbilical fold. So it is a peritoneal fold which is unpaired single fold and this fold is actually covers the urecus. So when you will see the fold, now here you can see the folding and this peritoneum is actually lying on the structures which are present on anterior abdominal wall. So this is the connection from the apex to the your umbilicus and this connection is covered by the fold of the peritoneum and this fold is known as median umbilical fold. Now what is medial umbilical fold? Now this is something which you have to first understand that when we are talking about the umbilical arteries, so you can see that this is your internal iliac artery. Now from the internal iliac arteries, you are having the two arteries which are known as umbilical arteries and these umbilical arteries are right side and here you have the umbilical artery of the left side. Clear? Now what will happen with these umbilical arteries that after the birth, after the birth, the proximal part of the umbilical artery, that means this portion of the umbilical artery is remain persist while the rest part of the artery will blocked and this part is later on known as your medial umbilical fold. Clear? So the medial umbilical fold is formed because this remaining part of the umbilical artery which obliterated is now covered by a peritoneal fold. The proximal part of this umbilical artery persists as a superior vesical artery. So the umbilical, medial umbilical fold is a peritoneal fold which is formed by the underlying obliterated portion of the fetal umbilical artery. The proximal patent portion of the umbilical artery form the superior vesical arteries which are going to supply our urinary bladder. Now in this image you can see that there is a depression present between the medial and median umbilical fold. So where is the median? So this is the apex. So this is your median umbilical fold and these are the right and left medial umbilical fold and this depression on both the side is known as supravesical fossa. So supravesical fossa is a uh, depression between the median and medial folds and this fossa sometimes become the site of internal hernias. Now in these two images what you are able to appreciate, now you are seeing the entrepreneur wall from anterior side, we have removed all the layer except the peritoneum. So outside the peritoneum you are able to see this is a median ligament and these are the medial obliterated arteries and these are the supravesical spaces and you can see the fold, the fold pattern is visible in this image where you can see the folding of the peritoneum along with the your these remnants of embryological part. Now what is the false posterior ligament? Now false posterior ligament, now if you will see that this is your urinary bladder and in the female you will find this is your uterus. Now posterior to that, now this fold of the peritoneum which is connecting this part of your posterior side of the lower portion of the uterus and the uh, bladder to the posterior portion of your pelvis is known as posterior false ligament. Clear? So what you are able to understand that ligaments are of two sets. One is known as true sets, another is false set. True set means there is a condensation of the fascia and most important condensation is in case of the male is known as puboprostatic ligament. In case of the female, you have pubovesical ligament. Clear? Now, apart from these supports of urinary bladder, the bladder is also supported from the below by the urogenital diaphragm also. So, whenever you are writing the supports of urinary bladder, you first have the idea what do you mean by the true fold, which is a condensation of pelvic fascia. What do you mean by the false fold? which are actually the peritoneal fold, then you should write down the name of those folds and the important thing is that what is the remnants of 
your um, umbilical artery, what is the remnant of fetal allantois. Clear? So, this is all for this session. Thank you.